You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Glory Hounds. Uh, man, I have been waiting to get back into this one, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the new Let's Play series I'm doing on Hooked on You. I'm probably, I think I'm gonna probably try and get an episode out a day on that one, or every other day, because I'm really interested to see where that one goes. Plenty of char uh, uh, about four characters to choose from. I heard they also might be adding some other characters in DLC, so who knows? <laughs> anyway, guys, let's jump right back into Glory Hounds. Please sit back and enjoy maintaining for the next 20 minutes, and let's go. Oh, Arm Shane, you're up. All right. <clears throat> Rain's tapping away at the awning, but the downpour hasn't deterred some of the usual some of the usual Friday night crowd from exploring the crown jewel of Batavia, city of the future. Oh no, they never let go. Something you said ten years ago. I got that song zombified stuck in my head too. There's nocturnals. There's nocturnals heading to their jobs for the night, while a few brave diurnals go from bar to bar to celebrate the weekend. All underscored by the hum of the underwater trains. That's really interesting. I can make out a few people swimming in the canals as well. Probably also out on the night. Probably also out on the night on the town. The stores still seem to be open down there. Shippersburg has a relatively large aquatic population, roughly a fifth of its inhabitants. Now, most can't live on land full-time, so a bunch of them live and work underwater, in the web of canals that run throughout the entire city. There's entire bustling neighborhoods down there, stores, bars, churches, apartments. And of course the train station Shippersburg is known for, a far cry from the quiet port town it used to be over, two, over 100 years ago. Things change quickly around here, they have to. When there's so many species with their own wants and needs living in one place, Technology is constantly evolving to meet them. One company in particular has allowed the city's infrastructure to flourish. Twenty years ago, Brevard Enterprises came out of nowhere and revolutionized the city, making it one of the most technologically advanced on the continent. Holograms, underwater transportation systems, recyclable breathing apparatuses. Even the town's security system runs on Brevard Tech. It's nothing short of a marvel and turned Shippersburg into a major tourist destination almost overnight. Of course, there are some oddities. The man behind the company, Raoul Brevard, has never been seen in public. He might as well be a ghost. He only communicates through spokespeople. He doesn't ha even have an online encyclopedia page. The rumors surrounding him have gotten to the point where some people think he doesn't exist at all. That he's made up by the higher-ups to, to sell some bullshit sentimental story. Uh, one man's dream and all that. On paper, though, he's technically my boss. Of course, I'm so far down the company hierarchy, I may as well be the body. I may as well be underground. <laughs> Interesting. My phone buzzes in my pocket. I sigh and extend a hand, twiddling my fingers to activate the holographic interface. I can't be bothered to grab it right now. A lion's face greets me, his piercing green eyes boring right into my soul. I should probably change my lock screen at some point, but it's been, uh, hard. Steven. My stomach turns, and I quickly swipe across the screen to make him go away. Even being inebriated doesn't make it any easier to look at him. Alright, notifications. One missed call from mom. She's been out of the country for a while, but I don't think she has the truck. I don't think she has the whole time zone thing figured out. I should call her back later. Ah, what voice was I doing for Willem? I think it was like Southern drawl. <clears throat> you gotta catch a cold standing out here like that. The door clicks shut behind me. I close the holographic interface like a child getting caught with his phone in class. Uh, I'm just waiting out the train. <laughs> He'll be waiting a while. It's gonna be pissing down all night. That sucks. God, just what I needed. Got places to be this late? Uh, just Mr. De Bruins. Uh, I have to pick up some things for lunch tomorrow. Say hello to the old bat for me. Been quite a while since I walked in there. She asks about you all the time. Tell her I'm taken. The rooster fumbles with a soggy pack of cigarettes. Uh, who's the lucky fella? Don't kiss and tell. You know that. How do you even do it? Easy. You tell someone they're cute, buy them a drink, and... Not that. How do you kiss someone without any lips? You just... And then... <laughs> he works his beak. That takes practice, it does. He finally manages to light a cig. Takes a long drag, looking at me all the while. He holds the pack out to me. A fancy one? It's very tempting right now. And yet... Nah, thanks. Been clean for a couple weeks now. That makes one of us. Good on ya. He puts the pack back in his pocket. <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to me, Al. Sounded like you were in a rough spot. He puts emphasis on the spot part. 
because of course he does. This isn't an intervention, is it? I just asked you a question. I finally relent with the loudest, most exaggerated sigh I can muster. I'm fine. I'm not. I can handle myself. Uh, barely. You know, I always land on my feet, even if it feels like I break my legs doing it every time. The rooster takes another drag. I don't doubt that. You've always been a right clever bloke. Uh, sometimes I just worry. He blows a thick cloud of smoke in my face. I nearly, ha I nearly have a coughing fit. Damn it, head, stop being so itchy. I'm not some charity case. Wasn't saying you were one. He taps his cigarette, letting glowing, letting glowing ash fall on the wet pavement. The rain slowed down to a very soft drizzle, making the scenery only marginally less depressing as people pack away their umbrellas. Mind if I tell you a story? It depends. He quickly shakes his head. This one's family friendly, I promise. Sure it is. A long time ago, right here, on a night just like this, I was working a graveyard shift. Weekend after Pride, everyone was still sleeping off their hangovers. Nothing to do, no one to see, when in walks this college kid. I'd seen him pass the place by a couple times, but he never came in before. After some prod, he told me he was gay, scared as shy to tell his parents. Said I was the first person he talked to about it. Can you believe that? A complete stranger. You know what I said? That it wouldn't leave the room? And? That I'd, that I'd have a place to belong no matter what? I don't mean to sound like a greeting card here, but we need other folks to survive, Alex. Ain't no one gonna, ain't no one gonna be better off if you keep in, if you keep bottling things up. I exhale. I'm just scared, I guess. Yeah. You heard, Lou. We're we're dinosaurs. I'm almost thirty, and I've been working the same job since I finished high school. You've got this place to be proud of. I got nothing. So yeah, I'm scared. What if I never amount to anything? I suck my teeth, trying to keep myself from tearing up. My vision blurs all the same. It's the rain, or so I tell myself. I think it's okay to not have figured out figured things out yet, Al. Personal opinion. You look at everyone else and think they all have their baggage neatly packed away. But truth is, we're all still mucking about trying to deal with things as best we can. He gestures to the crowd. Every single one of them. There's never any shame in not knowing who you are yet. Especially in your bloody 20s. A few feet away from us, a large white moth shrugs off the water still clinging to his coat. He looks at his watch before flapping his shimmering wings and taking flight, just like that. He hovers above the ground for a few moments before taking off into the night as fast as I can carry him. My eyes follow him as he drifts above the crowd and eventually above the buildings themselves. Before long, he's just a dot in the sky. I clench my teeth. It's such a common sight here, but it fills me with awe every single time. Awe and envy. I take a deep breath, trying my best to shake off the insecurity and sling my messenger bag over my shoulder. I could use a cigarette right now. I'm heading out. Hey, have a safe trip home, you hear? I don't want to hear about you getting mugged on the news. I've been here how many times now? That don't make the city any less dangerous at night. Fine, I'll text you when I get there. And I'm sorry about the anniversary thing, really. I, I wish I could make it. Tell you what, you helped me clean the hand up sometime and, it sometime and it's wad under the bridge. I know we ain't got the volunteer positions open no more, but I'd love to have you working behind the bar sometime. Like the good old days. Of course, I, I mean when... When do you have time? When I have... yeah. A big glob of rainwater drips down onto my neck as I step out from under the awning. It's freezing cold and the sound that escapes from my muzzle as it seeps down my back is less than flattering. Willem laughs and tosses what's left of his cigarette on the wet pavement, stomping it out. Have a good one, Alex. I mumble a bye myself pulling up my hood and walking off into the night. <laughs> Poor guy. If you follow the canal down from the Hain, you eventually get to the old foreign quarter of the Sweetheart of the Sweetwater District. I almost called it the Sweetheart District. <laughs> most of its inhabitants are descendants of immigrants who came here after the war. It's by far one of the most densely packed areas of Shippersburg, with every square meter having a restaurant or store offering foods or goods you can't get anywhere else. It was like the one place in town where things slow down a little. There's fewer screens, fewer obnoxious neon signs, and just a little past the Indian restaurant I always forget the name of, there's a little corner store. Ooh, and I bet we're going there right now. The dark, worn bricks make it stick out like a sore thumb next to all the more modern buildings. 
It's been graffitied all over. Some of the art, this art is as old as I am, maybe even older. The city's offered to clean it up multiple times, but the owner steadfastly refused. It says it adds character. The bright pink sign reads to Bruin in a gaudy looking font. The dimmed lights inside might give the impression that the store is closed for the evening, but it's only open after sundown. That sounds shady, but really, it's just because the owner's asleep during the day, like most nocturnals. When I was still in college, I used to stop by at least once a week to get something to eat after going clubbing. I grabbed some kielbasa and eat it all in one go at 3 in the morning. Ugh, those were the days. And like most of my other college food, the stuff here had some degree of flavor. And on top of being cheaper than anything I could buy at a regular grocery store. So, win-win. Uh, I've got a lot less free time these days, but I still grab a bite every now and then. <laughs> Rust. Oh, I like the grocery store. Nice aesthetic to it. <sighs> the shrill doorbell announces my arrival, almost loud enough to rupture my eardrums. The store is an assault on every single one of my senses. It's cluttered and claustrophobic in a way only the smallest of corner stores can manage. There's bright, colorful foreign packaging on every shelf. I can't even begin to read the text on half of it. Foreign, t foreign sweets, foreign booze, foreign spices. And my favorite, the foreign pastries they usually keep under glass near the counter. Oh yeah, those are actually really fucking good. It smells enough to make both my eyes and mouth water. An entire experience crammed into a place probably no bigger than my living room. Probably the greatest fire hazard in town. Uh, Mrs. De Bruin? I'm greeted by a voice almost as squeaky as that front, as that front door before its owner become, comes hobbling out of a small hallway behind the counter. Aww. Alex, sweetie! She rubs at her eyes, fixing her brightly colored headscarf I've never seen her both out. Her eyes, or at, least, or at least what I can see of them, light up when she sees me. I can't help but smile back at her. It's like I'm seeing my grandma again, except with wings and, eh, and big ears. And suspiciously sharp teeth. Hey, Mrs. De Bruin. Oh, sorry, guys. It's late. Hey, Mrs. De Bruin. It's been a while since I last saw you. You've gotten so tall. I'm pretty sure she just got a bit smaller. With a grunt and a crack of her back, that can't be good news. She drags out a milk crate from underneath the counter to stand on. She can't reach the register without it. It's old and battered from years of use. I remember local kids making a game out of trying to steal it. I won't confirm or deny having been one of said kids. As many tricks up my sleeve as spots on my face, the neighbors used to say. How you been? She wraps her bony paw. She wings her bony paws, almost knocking over small newspaper stand with her wings. It's as if it's a question she's been preparing for her entire life. Wonderful, dear. Absolutely wonderful. Her Lacan accent's as thick as it's always been in the 22 years I've known her. What kind of accent should I do for her if I can do one at all, given my southern upbringing? Uh, let's see. A business has been, oh, what's the word again? An exploding. Uh, booming? Booming, yes. It's the tourists, dear. The rainfalls put a bit of a damper on things. Uh, but on good nights, we have more customers than Lutetian, than Lutetian Museum. I see more tourists than townsfolk these days. Probably stopping by Shippersburg for the weed. I was just telling Andrea the same thing. It's good to see a young one so interested in the local culture. Yeah, it's the weed. You'll be taking the usual, yes? Mm-hmm. Can you pack in one extra this time? I could use a little boost. For you, I'll pack in two extra. You're thin as a rail. You could use some meat on these bones. I just eat them what my budget allows, really. Definitely not enough, then. Three extra it is. I, uh... You have to take care of yourself, Alex. How else will you get another boyfriend, hmm? After dying a little inside, I clear my throat. Uh, it's okay, ma'am. I'm not exactly on the m market right now. Nonsense! The market stays open until the meat goes bad. You'll never know when another customer will show up at your door. How do I think I? How do you think I met Andrea? Uh, bingo club? Online dating, and let me tell you, the 90s were a different time. None of those apps or hookup places are... Uh, please stop. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. You youngins have it easy, is what I'm saying. I guess I've been playing this game on hard mode all this time, then. As she waddles on over to the pastries, and she ba as she bags them, their sickeningly sweet smell starts wafting through the air, overpowering nearly everything else. I grab my wallet, taking out a small, taking out a five euro bill as she hops up onto the milk crate and starts tapping away at the register. All right, this plus carry the two and. No. Oh. We're open. Excuse me for a moment, dear. Oh dear. She hops off the crate and heads for the door. I'm left standing there, five euro bill in hand, so close to my pastries I can taste them already. 
Open up, Granny. I know you're in there. More knocking. No, ramming. The door handle rattles wildly, sending the bell connected to it into overdrive. I prick my ears up and sniff the air so I can maybe get a hint of who or what it is, but I can only smell the pastries. Slinking behind the stacked shelf facing the door, I take out my phone. Open! The person on the other end kicks the door so hard I, so hard I see wood bits coming off. Up! It opens inwards, dear. You need to push, not pull. Mrs. Bruin's voice is as soft as sweet as all, and soft as sweet as always. She's probably used to stuff like this by now. Meanwhile, I'm over here failing to dial emergency services because my hands are trembling so hard. Oh, uh, sorry. Don't worry, dear. It happens all the... The door slams open, inwards, creaking so hard it's a miracle it's still on its hinges. Oh, dear. Oh, what the... Oh, interesting. <laughs> Should I do the Italian mobster accent? Hey, what's he got to do about these? <laughs> I peer over the bag of sweets on the shelf to see some sort of fish standing in the doorway. Is it a barracuda? It's hard to tell when the lights are turned down so low. A time. The door crashes shut behind him with a ring of the bell and the splintering of the wood. I duck, hoping to, hoping to God that he hasn't seen me yet. All right, let me see if I can do this. Ahoy, ma'am! We're on the seven seas you haven't paid your fees yet. F fees? Emergency services, emergency services. Ah, those, so those large, er, large ears of yours ain't for just show. <laughs> Mrs. De Bruin lets out an affronted gasp. I don't know if it's because of the insult or whatever this pirate act is supposed to be. That's right, Granny. Fees. Protecting money, keeping the streets clean doesn't come cheap, you, come cheap, you know. Oh, God, I'm failing at this. Ah, let me channel the gangsters from that It's Always Sunny episode. One second, let me save it. Hey, oh! <laughs> the debt's to be paid, coffers to be filled. I pay my tax the same as everyone else, thank you. Well, see, this is a new kind of tax. You pay us, and we make sure nothing bad happens to you. You give and take, you get what I'm saying, madam? That won't be necessary. This is one of the safest neighborhoods in the city. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, but accidents happen when you least expect them. You don't want that, do you? Well, neither do I, and neither does Captain Ahab, scourge of the salt water. Is that a threat, dear? The salt water syndicate doesn't make threats, ma'am. It's just a suggestion. I've dated eels less slimy than this guy. Oh boy. I get as low to the ground as I can and finally manage to tap the call button. The line beeps and for a second, I hear my heart pounding in my throat. Hello? I steady my breathing and try being as quiet as I can and the barracuda continues to stick. Uh, help me, please, I'm... Thank you for calling Shippersburg Emergency Services for matters involving the police. Please press 1. Fuck, 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 fuck! Voice command not recognized. Please refrain from calling emergency services outside of emergencies. Continued misuse use will lead to... I close the call, calling over to the edge of the shelf to peek around the corner. Oh no, don't hurt the granny. And where do I even have the money, you would be the last person I would ever consider giving it to. The barracuda, the barracuda grins wild, wildly at her. His teeth are sharp as knives. He's got her backed up against the counter now. She's clinging to it for dear life. I suppose we'll have to do things the hard way, won't we? The barracuda's hand goes where I can't see it. I hear a click, then a gasp from Mrs. De Bruin. What the fuck? Is that a fucking flintlock? You're over here threatening someone with a fucking flintlock. Next thing I know, the man's got a pistol pointed straight at her head. It's an old flintlock pistol, like something straight out of a pirate movie. Except it's real. And right in front of me. Look, he gets one shot, and then he has to reload for like five fucking minutes. And probably doesn't fire blanks. Someone has to do something. I have to do something. Think, Al, think! I scan the shelves for anything I can use. Maybe there's something heavy in there. My eyes fall on a large plastic condiment bottle. I try sniffing it to see what's in it, and I have a hold and I have to and I have to hold in a pain sob almost immediately. It's sweet, sour, spicy all at the same time. Are those onions floating in it? What is this unholy concoction? Get it together, Alex. You have to do this. For once in your life, get your shit together. I get up. Gripping the bottle so tight I can feel my paw getting sweaty. Oh dear. Hey! My voice cracks five times shouting that shouting a three-letter word. Good going, Alex. Very intimidating. My head snap 
His head snaps in my direction, immediately, immediately, and the right away I feel the semblance of courage I had moments ago drained from my body. You leave that lady alone right this instant! I charge forward, condiment bottle in hand, running on nothing but pure adrenaline and a few bottles of cheap beer. Are you running a rig? I catch him off guard and using whatever force I can muster. Bam! I slam the bottle down on the fishbowl helmet. Oh. Of the soft material it's made of, it's made out of cushions to blow. The barracuda falls flat on his ass regardless. The cap of the bottle on the ground next to him. He looks up at me, dazed, growling. It'd have been funny if it wasn't if he wasn't carrying a deadly weapon. Uh oh. You just made the biggest mistake of your life, hound. I'll cleave you to the brisket. If looks could kill, this guy would be hacking me to pieces right now. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Actually, let's see. I'm pretty sure that's what he wants to do. Either way, I don't under I don't understand pirate lingo. And he reaches for the gun again. This is it. All I wanted was a pastry. I didn't even get to eat it. Life's cruel. Oh, shit. He points the pistol at me. I wince. I close my eyes. I squeeze the bottle. Oh, for, for the butt of me biscuits! <laughs> is this a themed gang? I hear something clatter on the floor, and when I pry my eyes open, I have to resist the urge to sh immediately shut them again. What was in the bottle is now all over the would-be robber's fishbowl helmet, dribbling down onto his designer's jacket. The smell is absolutely putrid. He rubs at his helmet to clear it, but it just stains his sleeves red. Shit! Ha! Huh, I mean, uh, when I get my hands on you, you be, you're gonna be shark tail, you mangy dog! I turn to Mrs. De Bruin. <laughs> oh my god. Run! And off she goes. It takes her a moment, but she nods as and disappears, sprinting for the door. Oh dear. Just me and Pirate Pete over here now. Alright guys, I'm gonna save it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!